One Baltimore Ravens player set to make his shocking return uh, this weekend would be Marcus Williams. And I use the word shocking because I'm still in awe that he not only practiced because initially when he first practiced, I was that was crazy to me because I'm like, man, this guy just a couple of weeks ago, just a couple of weeks ago after week one, we were talking about, oh, man, he might be gone for the year. And even if he isn't gone for the year, he's going to be gone for a very long time. And that was a big blow to the Baltimore Ravens, a, a really good free safety, a big money free safety. And I'm like, man, two years straight, man, we about to be missing him for a huge chunk of the year. And it's unfortunate because his impact was so felt right away, especially last year. Because uh, from jump, he was over there balling, even though he picked off our guy Joe Flacco a couple of times. I, I had to forgive him for that, but it's okay. But anyway, when he practiced a couple of days ago, he was limited. So I'm like, all right, he's limited in practice. So I expect him to be limited the next day. And I don't really expect him to play because he just got back. He just got back. So I don't expect him to play in a game on Sunday. But no, 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 no. He went from limited practice uh, on Wednesday, which was a shock enough, but then it got even more shocking and surprising because on Thursday, Marcus Williams, a pec injury. Again, there were conversations about his season being done. He went from limited on Wednesday to a full, a full practice participant on Thursday. So that's like, that's insane to me. And I know their bodies are different. They play different positions. So they, their injuries are different. So I can't necessarily compare the, 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 their injuries to each other, but I will in this instance because it's just so crazy because Marcus Williams, a, a, a possible season-ending injury, and then boom, he's limited and then a full participant. But then you got Ronnie Stanley and Tyler Linderbaum. Again, different bodies, different injuries. So I can't really, it's not fair to compare, but just thinking about it uh they were both limited in wednesday and thursday's practice so and and this injuries weren't season ending type injuries again not a fair comparison but just thinking about it and, and it just it just really shows that this is how crazy this is like I, I think marcus williams got some deer antler spray or something because for him to come back so soon it's insane but there are still a couple of concerns, and we're going to get into those concerns, but first... If you're like me, then you can eat cereal at any time of the day. Because cereal just tastes so good. It can be filling. And in my opinion, it serves as both a meal and a snack. But it can be dangerous. Because normally, some of the best tasting cereal will have so much sugar in it. And we're trying to get right. We're trying to take care of our bodies. But then there's Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon cereal not only tastes good, but get this. It has zero grams of sugar. 13 to 14 grams of protein. And 4 to 5 net grams of carbs in each serving. But I know what you're thinking what about the flavors now for me when i try something i like getting a good mix of everything so magic spoon's variety pack is perfect for me the flavors it includes are fruity cocoa peanut butter and my personal favorite frosted they also give you that nostalgic feel because on the back of each box there are different activities to do such as crossword puzzles mazes and one that i really like called finish the story so magic spoon has a good variety of flavors but it also fits a good variety of lifestyles it's high protein keto friendly gluten free grain free soy free wheat free and it's naturally flavored magic spoon is cereal reinvented it's that same great Great taste you remember but now it's just upgraded with grown-up ingredients nothing artificial since i know you want to order a box now to do that it's easy just click the link below to grab a variety pack so you can try it today and be sure to use the promo code tkic at checkout to get five dollars off of any order or just go to magicspoon.com slash tkic and magic spoon is so confident in their product it's back with a 100 happiness guarantee so if you don't like it for any reason they'll refund your money no questions asked so click the link below or scan the qr code on the screen and use the code TKIC for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash TKIC to save $5 today. And you know what? Now that I think about it, maybe Marcus Williams was uh, drinking and eating some uh, some Magic Spoon. Maybe, maybe that's what helped him come back. But anyway, um, some concerns that I have uh, for Marcus Williams is how? How did he do it? And one of the answers to that question, it could be Adrian Dixon. Remember that coach who the, the, the Ravens hired from the Titans a couple years back? They hired him, and he was more so a recovery specialist. He helped guys come back. I know the Titans, I think they had either broke some record in the NFL or, or definitely had the record that year where they had the most guys come back from injury. Now, it sucks because in order to get that record, you have to have the most guys injured, and even though it seemed like the Ravens were leading that list, the Titans were just slightly above them. Uh, but 
they had a lot of guys come back. They had a lot of guys recover from their injuries. And the Ravens brought him over with the intention like, hey, this is what we need. Because we remember, we've seen it a lot of times where Ravens, a player will get injured. We said it all the time. But then when they come back, they won't be fully ready. They won't be properly healed. And we'll watch them. We'll watch them. And a lot of us are not doctors. Even though with all that Ravens injury news that we've gotten over the past couple of years, it feels like we all got our doctorate degrees or MBAs and whatnot. But anyway, um, we would watch them with our naked eye. Oh, well, not mine because I'd be having to have glasses on during the game. But we would watch them and we would see like, man, they they don't look the same. They they, they don't look right. They, they don't look themselves. We saw it with Ronnie Stanley. I remember, uh, was it last year, last year, the year before last, where he came back in a week one game against the Raiders. And a lot of people are like Ronnie Stanley, he is not looking good. Uh, that that's no, he he he's, he's not himself. And it turned out that he was still hurt. Then he had to miss a, a big chunk of that year. Uh, we've seen it with Nick Boyle. Nick Boyle came back from injury and he just wasn't right and, and felt like it, it was probably never the same since. And I feel like with with him, I did he? I don't think he retired, but I don't think he's on the team at all right now. With Pat Ricard, it happened with him with Derek Wolf. Oh boy, <laughs> yeah, and Derek Wolf certainly he shared a lot of experience with the Ravens medical staff and the training staff and all that. That was not positive but we saw it we had enough and there was more too but we, we've seen enough cases to where guys they'll come back and they just they won't be themselves yet they won't fully be the player who they used to be and we know injuries can mess you up but it's important that when you come back you come back right and you get it right because you don't want to re-aggravate the same thing you don't want to re-injure yourself because that can make everything worse uh, but with Marcus Williams uh, my concern is not just how he came back so fast, but just for the Baltimore Ravens to make sure that he is all the way right. Now, we know with the Baltimore Ravens, um, we've seen it a lot uh, this uh, offseason and a little bit during the season, too, with them being just extra precautious um, and them just being extra safe. And that's important. That, that's extremely important. So with Marcus Williams, while it is expected right now, like, hey, you, you practice in full on a third. You go from limited to full participant in practice and you just got back. Like, it's expected that you're going to play. It's expected that you're going to play. But I just hope that he is all the way right. Like, all the way right. Now, with the Ravens, it's, it's nice to know that they do have Geno Stone. And Geno Stone is somebody that I've continued to say, like, hey, with him... He puts less less pressure on Marcus Williams and the Ravens for Marcus Williams to be back so fast because he can play. Geno Stone can play. Like in the Bengals game, that was a good example of it, but that was not the only example of it. Geno Stone has shown that he can play, but the only thing in, in his way has been opportunity. Uh, so now he's been getting that opportunity. They also signed Deron Harmon, uh, who's on the practice squad. Uh, so they have some guys in, in, in the defense. The defense, they help each other out big time. They, they have been like the ultimate, hey, we got your back, no pressure, we're going to make this thing happen. Weeks one through three, the defense, in my opinion, they have been amazing, especially when you think about the circumstances. With Marlon Humphrey out, Tyus Bowser out, Dafe Away was out this last game, Jabo left super early, I think on the second play uh, this last game, they had a lot of guys out, man. And they still have been doing their thing. And this is a defense, mind you, that does not really even have a pass rush. They ain't even got a pass rush like that. They, now, when they blitz, sometimes they can get there. But four-man front? No. Not yet, at least. So, so yeah, the defense needs to be commended, in my opinion. Uh, but Marcus Williams, having Marcus Williams back with this defense, oh, it makes them just that much better. And then it allows you to have Geno Stone on a rotation. Like, you, if you could have like, Gino, a player like him on a rotation, I ain't trying to hype him up. But Geno Stone, to me, is a good player, man. He's a, he's a good player with opportunities. But if you got somebody like him sitting on a back burner, just because you got somebody like Marcus Williams, who is a great player, in my opinion. That, that's a beautiful thing to have. And depth is so important. It was super important this year. And we find it out super early because of how many people have been hurt. So with Marcus Williams being back, I, I, I know I'm excited, man. <laughs> I'm super excited. And I, I just hope the Ravens are not rushing uh, him to be back because it's very important that he gets all the way right. Because it's still super early in the season. It's, it's super early in the season. For there to have been conversation about, oh, man, he could be out for a while. For John Harbaugh to say he could be out for a while and he came back, he come back three weeks later. Oh, that's 
that's not John Harbaugh wild wild times to me. And I know it's definitely not to y'all either because y'all know how Harbaugh is when he speaks about or really doesn't speak about injuries. He's very careful with his words when it comes to that because he knows that we, we've been tired of being strung around left and right and wondering what Harbaugh means and what he's really trying to say and whatnot. Um, so with Marcus Williams being back, though, and it's looking like he's going to play this weekend, that's a beautiful thing. 